the teachings of Rabbi Ephraim Sprecher, Dean of Students at Diaspora Yeshiva on Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Today we're going to speak about how to feel the Shekhinah, literally. So let's take a look at our source sheet, side number one, source seven. This is from the Talmud Bavli Masech Sota. Side number one, we're doing source seven. The Gemara Masech Sota says, Doris Rav Simloya. See a check there, Mark 7. Mm -hmm. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu, why was he so uh, longing and desiring to come to Eretz Israel? He davened, how many prayers did he daven to come to Israel? 515. Five, uh, 515. Why did he want to come to Israel so much? So the Gemara asked the question, the Chilech of the did he need to eat from the fruits, the avocados here he wanted to eat? Or the Jaffa oranges, is that why he wanted to come? Or this boy Or did he need to be satisfied from the goodness of Eretz Israel? Why was he so eager to come to Eretz Israel? Which is a strange question, because there's a mitzvah of Yishev Eretz Israel. There's a mitzvah to live in Eretz Israel. What kind of, what's the Gemara asking why did he want to come here? He likes the, uh, the, the grapefruits here. There's a mitzvah of Yishev Eretz Yisrael. Isn't that reason enough to come to Eretz Yisrael? Strange Gemara. Elokach ha'be Moshe. But Moshe Rabbeinu said, Harbe mitzvot netztav the Yisrael. Many mitzvahs the Jews are commanded. Ve'em miskayim me'ev Yisrael. Many mitzvahs can only be done where? Only Eretz Yisrael. Akona seni lo'aretz. I want to enter the land. Kidei shiskayimu kulan ayodi. So I'd be able to do all of them. So God said to him, I know you're interested in the reward of the mitzvah. Let's play virtual reality. I'll give you schar, even though you don't do the mitzvah, stay where you are in the midbar, and I'll make believe that you come here and you get the schar anyway. Strange Gemara. Moshe is interested in the schar. What's Sigmar talking about, Obi? And isn't just the fact living in Eretz Yisrael, isn't that enough of a mitzvah? The, the Sefri says in the Vorim, Pashas Re'ei, Shkula, mitzvah, Yishu Vetzor, Kenegat Kol Mitzvah Sebet The mitzvah of living in Eretz Yisrael is equal to all the mitzvahs in the Torah. So why does Sigmar say he wants to eat the fruits here? Just to come and live in Eretz Yisrael. Isn't that reason enough to desire to come here? What's so interesting about the fruits? What are you so focused on the fruits for? There's a passage in Jeremiah chapter 2. Va'avi eschem el Eretz HaKarmel and I brought you to... What does Eretz HaKarmel mean? The fruit... What? <coughs> Fruitful, fertile land. Lechol pirya v'tuva To eat the, the fruit and the goodness of the land. So that's a virtue in itself. God tells Jeremiah, I brought you to a fruitful land to enjoy what? The delicious perot. So that itself is what? A virtue. But what about just the midst of what? Of living in Eretz Israel. Isn't that reason enough to come to Eretz Israel? So you could say that that's a mitzvah done passively. You come to Eretz Israel and like you're sitting and you're doing nothing and you're getting reward. But Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to what? To do an active mitzvah. Somehow by eating the fruits of Pisgat Zev, I mean of Kiyat Moshe, you're doing an active mitzvah of living in Israel. Why? So living in Israel, you're sitting and taking a nap, you're doing a mitzvah of Yishev Sol, but you're doing it passively. The Gemara is saying here in source number seven that somehow by eating the fruits of the land, you are doing an active mitzvah of living in Israel. How? By eating an Israeli apple? Or an Israeli what? Date. Date. Somehow you're actively doing the mitzvah of Yishia to Israel. But the question is, how? So let's look at source number eight. Hilchas brachos aperis. Now when we eat the species that Israel is praised for, when you're eating olives, or you're eating dates, or figs, or pomegranates, or grapes, you make a bracha, me'en shalosh. And what, what nusach do you say in that bracha? Look at source number eight. 
We say the noicha mepirya nisma betuva. You say in the bracha, I want to eat of its fruit and be satisfied with its goodness. Some people say you shouldn't say that. That's why you want to come to Israel to enjoy a delicious Yaffa orange. But we do say it. Don't we say it? The noicha mepirya nisma betuva. In the bracha of En Shalosh, you have to eat grapes, dates, pomegranates, or olives. You say in the bracha of Anoichal and Piri of Nizmatuva. But some say you shouldn't say it. Look at foot, footnote number eight. The Beit Yosef Arachayim. Vinire Shetamoi, Bimne Shehu Mefare Shema, Shono Oymim Noichal Piri of Nizmatuva. Eina Tachlet Shilachila. Some say that's not the reason you want to come to Israel. To enjoy a juicy orange? That's not the reason. We want to enjoy what? The Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael, not the juicy orange. Who are Tachlis? The Tachlis is, in source number eight, what? The Kedusha of Israel. But the halach is that we do say, I want to enjoy the delicious fruits of Pisgat Zev, I mean of Kiat Moshe. But others say you shouldn't because you're only coming for the Kedusha, not for the juicy fruits. But the, the fruit is part of the Kedusha. Beautiful. Chava just gave the whole shear away. <laughs> the Kedusha and Tahara of Israel is dafka absorbed while you're enjoying a delicious Yaffa orange. Or a delicious uh, Pisgat Zev date or fig. The two Where do you live? Where do you live? Arman on the Tziv, a delicious apple from Arman on the Tziv. Yeah. That's the way to take Kedusha. It's not two separate ideas. But I'm going to show you the Kiddush in source number nine. That Dafke, by the, enjoying the delicious fruits of Eretz Israel, that's what Moshe wanted. That's how you get the Kedusha. Who says you are what you eat? By ingesting the fruits of Israel, you are taking inside of you Kedusha. But even more than that. Stay tuned, Mark. Source number nine. Number nine. This is the Bach. The Bach lived in the 1600s. The a great Posek. Not that. Bayit Chadash. His name was Rabbi Yol Circus. And he wrote a work called Bayit Chadash. So the great rabbis are known after their works. Bayit Chadash. The acronym is Bach. N NYPD. Source number nine. Look what the Bach says in Orechayim. Simon Reish Ches. The cost of old. You see what it says, number nine? The Yesh Armim. The Noachopin is with Tuva Vein Lama. Some say when you're eating, after you make uh, the Brach of Ein Sholosh, you shouldn't say, I come to enjoy the fruits and satisfaction of uh, the goodness of Israel. The Tema. What do you mean you shouldn't say it? I'm shocked. How dare some rabbi suggest that you shouldn't say what? You're enjoying the fruits and the goodness of Israel. How only Kedusha is Eretz Yisrael, exactly what Chava said in source number nine. The Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael is only enjoyed, the Kedusha of only by eating the Paris. How do you get the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael? Mukadesh has Oretz al Yona, he nishpat gam the Parasel. Also by eating the fruits, that's how you are ingesting the Kedusha of what? Of Eretz Yisrael. Sheyonke mi Kedusha Sashchina. You hear what he's saying? The parents of Eretz Yisrael are Yonek. How do you say in English Yonek? Nursing. Nursing. The parents of Eretz Yisrael are nursing from the Shechina Hakdosha. Be care of Oretz. You hear this? Ki al Kain Hazair. V'oim v'sot pashis masay. Therefore the Torah warns us. In the Midbar Lamed Hei. V'loy tetamet Oretz. Do not defile the land, Ashatam Yoshim, but that you live in it. Ashini Shachmato, God says, I live in this land. Kini Hashem Shochem Betok Banei Yisrael. I, God, live in Israel and I live amongst the Jewish people. Vaimi Imte Tamla to Oretz, if you Chasashon defile the land by sinning, in Shechas Atumah Gamba Persel, you're also defiling what? Not just the land, but also what? The fruits. Hayom kimimeno, that nurse from it. Vikva nistalka hashchina. Be careful. And this way you're causing chasachom, the shchina to what? Take a powder. Window. 
I can't live in a neighborhood that's defiled, God says. Ashani shochein betocha, the word shechina, it's from the word shochein. God says, I live here. The guf aret, mamish. God says, I live mamish the guf aretz. I live in Pizgazev, mamash, I mean in Kiyat Moshe. Mamash, God says. But chas to show, if you defile the land, the stalk of the tumah, then the shechina has to depart because of the tumah. V'nibshak mazeh, ki gam in this way, if I leave, I have to Hashem cause the Shekhinah to leave from Israel. Until now, So the Shekhinah actually dwells in the land and in the fruits of Israel. Now that you're eating the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, and if the land is defiled, chas v'sholem, the stalka hashchina, then you're causing the shchina to what? Go away. Ki shehat tuma nechnestes im achilas peris, because the tuma chas v'sholem of the sins of the land goes into the fruits, and it defiles not just the land but the people itself. Yotzas kenegda hakodesh mekerev yisrael v'al kei nicha. And therefore, we should say, after you eat grapes or figs or dates or pomegranates or olives, you should say, as we say, I, I, am, I ate from its fruits and I'm satisfied from her goodness, from her fruit. Whose fruit? Who's the her? The Shechina. The Shechina. The Shechina is feminine. The Noach Imperia says a new understanding now. When you're making alamichya, the Noach Imperia, I'm eating from her fruit and I'm satisfied from her goodness. Who's the her? The Shechina, which dwells in the fruits of Israel. Listen to this. Ki I think it's underlined, the bottom of nine. You see that mark? Ki ba'chilas parasel onu nezoyinim bedut sata Shechina. You're really saying I wouldn't dare say this. By eating the fruits of Eretz Yisrael, you are, you are, what does Nezoni mean? Nourished and fed from the Gidusha of the Shechina. The Nizba Mitavosa, and you're satisfied from her goodness. Whose goodness? The Shechina. So what an amazing Bach. Every time you eat a fruit of Eretz Yisrael, Chava, you're ingesting, do I dare say, the Shechina. That's what the Bach says. You could say it, Chave, take it, that's why take it with you. Number nine, number nine. You keep that pay. That's just incredible what the Bach is saying. That's what he's saying. So now we understand a little bit deeper. The Gemara is asking, did Moshe, did Moshe want to eat from the fruits? What's the word tzarich? Go back to number seven. Did Moshe need to be satisfied from the fruit? Now we understand. Since the Shechina was always inside of Moshe anyway, he didn't need to eat the fruits of Pizgadzev because he already has the Shechina inside of him. He's Isha Lokim. So the, the Talmud says, Hu Tzarich. Isn't that amazing? Moshe didn't need the Tosefet Kedusha of the fruits of Israel. Moshe didn't need it. But me and you and you and me, we sure need it. Moshe been there, done that. He already had the Shechina. He already was super ten. So he didn't need to eat the fruits of Israel because he already had the Shechina. Been there, done that. But we do need to eat the fruits of Israel because we're not Moshe Rabbeinu. So Chava, what, what did we learn today? Every time you eat a fruit of Israel, you are ingesting the Shechina into yourself. Isn't that incredible? Amazing idea. When you eat an apple of Israel, an orange, or any fruit of Israel, you have to hear the Mukhan Zuman, I'm about to ingest the Shinak Dosha. And when I make the afterbrach of Noicham Epiriam, Nizbatuba, I'm eating from her fruit and satisfied from her goodness. It doesn't just mean Mother Earth, it means the Shina Hakidosha, which is feminine. Isn't that an amazing idea. Wow whole new understanding of eating the fruits of Eretz Yisrael. Rav Shalom Gold says, if you want to uh, feel the Shekhinah, 
go to the Kotel. If you want to see the Shechina, go to Machna Yehuda. Wow. That's what he used to say. Shalom Gold? Yeah, he's from Harnoff. Yeah, he, he gives a shir here. He's a great rabbi. So that's what, that was his famous line. You want to feel the Shechina, go to Kotel. You want to see the Shechina, go to the Shuk. What a display of what? Of delicious fruits and veggies. Only in the land of Israel. My mother, Olea Sholem, when she came from Flatbush to visit me, she said she never tasted, she never knew that fruits and vegetables can taste so delicious. She said she never knew that uh, oranges and apples and dates and grapes can be so delicious. She, it exploded in her mouth. And she said when she went back to Flatbush, she couldn't eat the fruits in Flatbush no more because they tasted like wood. After she tasted the fruits of Pizgadzev, she said the fruits of Flatbush taste like wood. Isn't that amazing? Was the what? Was the A and P. Was A and P. No, she went to ShopRite. Hmm? But, but in the importance of living in, in the Eretz Yisrael, look at side number two, source 11. Side number two, source 11. This is from the Shema. The Sambdmas Devore Eile. We say this twice a day, Chava. No, source 11. Deuteronomy 11. The Sambdmas Devore Eile. You shall place these words. Which words of the Torah? Alavafka me alnafshechem. I'm reading side 211. You shall tie them on your hand, and they shall be for an ornament between your eyes. So it's talking about the midst of what? Of Tvilin. Right? Rashi in source number 12, an amazing Rashi in source number 12. The Santam is Devare. You shall place my words. It says, Alavafchem. What does Alavafchem mean? On your heart. Shouldn't it say, Bilavafchem? The Balatan yes is Kashachav, not me. You know, you know Hebrew very good. Look, the Samtans the Vore Eleh, you should ask your uh, Ulpan teacher. Look at source number 11. The Samtans the Vore Eleh, it says, Alevavchen. You should place my words of the Torah on your heart. Shouldn't it say, Bilavavchen? Inside your heart? How come it says, Alevavchen? What? <laughs> Al means on. Should be what? Also mean about. About your heart. What does that mean, about your heart? That doesn't make sense. Uh, I mean, God knows Hebrew, right? He invented Hebrew. So he should have said, Yehuda, source 11, guess your teacher. The sound of the how come God says, Alevavchem? Place my words on your heart. It should say, Bilevavchem. No, says the Balatanya. The Talmud tells us, Habo Letaya Messiah Oisai. If someone comes to purify himself, God will what? Help him. Help him. Even if you can't put the words of the Torah in your heart, you're just going through the motions. I'll help you. Nike, just do it. Even though you don't really mean it. The Talmud says in Psachim 50, Tainus 7, in Sota, a person should always do mitzvahs that fill us shalolishma. Shimatok shalolishma, balishma. What does that mean? Fake it until you make it. Do your best. Allah Just go through the motions, even if it's just on top of your heart. But there's a called, I think it's called Chava, the trickle down theory. It sinks in. It sinks in. You just go through the motions, Alevavchem. Therefore, we say, Nase before Nishma. Even though I don't understand it, I really don't mean it, just, Nike, just do it. The talk shalom Lishma, Baal Lishma. We have a guarantee. If you just do it, eventually, you'll mean it. The Judaism is a religion of action, of doing. The Chinuch says, action shapes character. You keep doing it long enough, it will sink in. The Alevavchem, Chava will become Bilevavchem. Or Betoch Levavchem. Start out Alevavchem. Isn't that amazing? 
Judaism is the religion of doing. The Nase is always before. The Nase is always before the Nishma. Now, speaking about Tvilin, source number 11, Chanoch, speaking about Tvilin, tie them on your hands and on between your eyes, source 11. The, the Pasha of Tvilin, there are four Pashas in Tvilin. The same four are in the head and in the arm, but there's one major difference. In the head Tvilin, the four Pashas are separate Batim. They're four separate compartments. The hand filling are the same four parshas, but they're on one cloth. What's the symbolism of it? The four parshas of the head filling, four separate sections. In the arm filling, the same four parshas, but all on one section. What's it all about? There's an amazing Rashi in the end of Pasha's bow. I don't want to scare you. Pesach is around the corner. I don't want to scare you. We speak about the Arba Banim. The four sons, Rashi makes an amazing statement. The end of Pasha's bow, Rashi says one of the reasons that the Tefillin contained four Pashas is Kineget. Four sons. The four sons. Did you know this, Banish? Good thing you came today. Kineget Arba Banim. Rashi, the end of Pasha's bow, connects the four Pashas of the Tefillin to the four sons of the Seder. Say what? <coughs> What's Rashi talking about? Mark, are you with me on this? Now, Savechik explains what Rashi means. The four parshas of the tefillin represent the four sons. Even the Rasha gets a parsha of tefillin. We respect the Rasha. He's part of Am Yisrael. We'll take him. The 11 herbs and spices of the Katoris, one had a very terrible smell. What's that terrible smell represent? The Rishoyim. <laughs> but if it's not in the mix, the whole of all this puzzle. He's part of Klal Yisrael. The today is different. Right? So even the Rasha is represented by a Parsha of the Tefillin. But the Het Tefillin, they're four separate Parshas, four separate sections. <clears throat> the Het Tefillin represents Chava intellectual, intellectual pursuit. When it comes to debating and arguing, we respect the Russia's opinion as well. He gets a section of the tefillin, in the head tefillin. The head tefillin is intellectual thought. Judaism is the only religion that what? That you're allowed to question. Other religions, my way, the highway. Judaism encourages questions. Even questions that are heretical. But when it comes to doing, the Yad represents what? Action. action there we all got to be on the same cloth ah. and the nasa comes before the nishma therefore what fill you put on first easel the hand filling russia will respect you to debate your questions and nishma you get a section of filling that's when it comes to intellectual pursuit but it comes to nasa which comes before Nishma, we all got to be on the same page. We all got to do it. We all can have different opinions and different ideas of why we do it. Fine. But do it, you got to do it. Then not just do it. Nike, first, even if you're a Russia, you got to put on Tvilin. You got to do the mitzvahs. Mm -hmm. Then you can question why. Right. We respect your question. But when it comes to doing, all debate ceases. All four sections, which represent the four sons, have to be on one cloth. What does one cloth mean? One page. And therefore, the Nasa before the Nishma. They all have to come. That's well, they yeah. all have to come together and do it. And then you can debate as much as you want. Well, every human being has his four attributes. That's the whole point. Which of the four sons am I? All of us have his attributes. All of us, if I'm honest. Sometimes I act like a Chacham. Sometimes, and sometimes I lose it, I act like a Russian. Good, the bad, and the ugly. All of us, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Exactly. We're all of us, right? My Rebbe would say, Rapam Zatzal, every person is a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, he would say. If you don't believe that, you don't know yourself. That's what he said. Who said? My Rebbe, Rapam Zatzal, every person is a Dr. Jekyll and a Mr. Hyde. The walking paradox. Who 
knows what evil lurks in the hearts of man. Only the shadow knows. God is called the shadow. Hashem Chilcha. Until him, God is called a shadow. God is your shadow. It's amazing. The guy who wrote that program, The Shadow, I'm dating myself from the 50s. You were too young. It must have been a Jewish writer. The shadow knows. Because Baruch is called my Hashem Tzilcha. It's a post in Psalm 126. God is your shadow. So, Ezi Gibor Kovish is Yitzro, right? You got to overcome. But we all lose it sometimes. So, what do you have to do, Chava? We have to work up our good points, right? Build up our good character and try to minimize our, what, our negative character traits. So, anyway. Look at Rashi 12. Amazing Rashi 12. The something is Devarai. Afla Acha Shetiglu, even when you're going to Golut, source number 12, still distinguish yourself with mitzvot. Hanich Tfilin, continue to put on Tfilin where? In Lakewood. Asu Mezuzais, continue to put on Mezuzais where? In Tinek. Why? Why have I? Am I making this up? Kidei, Kidei, source number 12. Shaliyo Lucho Chadoshim Keshetam Zeru. The only reason, says Rashi, it's not a Rashi, it's a Sifri. The only reason that you're doing mitzvahs and chutzlaret is only they shouldn't appear chadoshim. What does that mean? No. They shouldn't appear new to you when you come home. Isn't that amazing? So according to the Sifri, which Rashi is quoting, the only reason we're doing mitzvahs and chutzlaret is that when we come home, what are you doing? What's that black box on your head? What is that? Hmm? I'm prepared. So, when you, practice. You're practicing. But if you want to do it for real, says Rashi, and the Sifri, and the Ramban in the next source, the only way to do mitzvahs for real, Chav, you want to pitch in the major leagues? You've got to come to Israel. Otherwise, you're only warming up in the bullpen. Uh, remember Dizzy Dean? Or in the minor leagues? You, you don't remember Dizzy Dean before your time, right? I mean, how long can you pitch in the minor leagues? And now, now Rashi wrote this in France. When Rashi wrote this, Chava, there was no El Al. How's he going to get here? Swim? Right? right? Swim the channel, whatever. The Crusades. But today, but today, there's no excuse. Living in Israel is the greatest of all mitzvot. And if mitzvahs only count for real, says Rashi, look at source number 12. And he quotes a pasuk in Jeremiah. Looks like Jeremiah was a real Zionist, Chava. Source number 12, he quotes Jer Yermio Lamed Aleph. Jeremiah was a Navi, was a good friend of mine. Uh, not a bullfrog, he was a Navi. And what does he say, Chav, in source 12? Tzvi lechot put up signpost. The Yidna going to Babylon, Long Island. He says, Yidna, don't forget to do mitzvahs. They are your signpost to practice when you come what? When you come home. Wow. Thank God we're home. But Jeremiah uh, was a Cohen, wasn't he? Jeremiah Yol was a Cohen. How did you know? That's oh, right. Many, many years. Do you know the Rav Kahana Zechat Tzadik Evracha said that he is a Gilgal of Jeremiah Yol. He would say that. I heard him say that. Wow. They both Kohanim, both persecuted and hated by their own people. Jeremiah Yol was thrown in jail and beaten by whom? Fellow Jews. Rav Kahana was thrown in jail and beaten by Jewish policemen. And he felt that he's a Gilgal of Yermio. And they both were martyrs. They were both murdered. Rav <coughs> Kahana was right. Right? Kahana was right. Yermio was right. But a prophet is never appreciated in his own lifetime. Why is that? Hmm? People don't hear, like to hear the truth. Rav Kahana's atal was a Navi. Jeremiah was lovely, but in their own period they were hated and persecuted because people don't want to hear the truth. I think it's called shoot the messenger. Hmm? Jeremiah warned them, if you don't do tshuva, the churban is coming. And the Rav Kahana warned them, if you don't get them out, they'll blow you up on buses and stab you. He warned them 30, 30 years ago or more, and they just didn't want to hear the truth because the truth is too painful to face. 
So source number 13, the Ramban. Why living in Israel is the most important mitzvah. So source number 13, I'll explain you what he says. He says, if you look in the book of Daniel, Kava, Daniel, my brother, there it says that God chooses to run the world through heavenly messengers called Sarim. Just like a human king has governors to control his provinces, the Melech Malchi and Lachim, the king of all kings, chooses to run the world by appointing heavenly ministers to govern certain countries. The book of Daniel tells us that. So each country has a, a heavenly prince in charge of it, a malach. The only country that doesn't have a malach in charge is what? Israel. Eretz Israel. Here it's a local call. Local? So Ramban explains, when you're davening to Hashem in Chutz Loretz, you're davening to Hashem, but who is there to intercept the prayer? It's that Malach in charge of France, or Borough Park, or Queens. Every borough, every province has a heavenly angel that God made him in charge of that district. So even though you're davening to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, it's the Malach that intercepts the prayers and what brings it to God. Jews don't like middlemen. We don't like middlemen. So uh, what's the old joke? Why did God create Gentiles? Somebody has to pay, has to pay uh, retail. <laughs> so Trump is a Shalah, so he has a real powerful uh, guardian angel. Please hear, right? hear me, right. Yes. So the Sar Shalah America, I don't know who he is, I don't know, it's Trump's guardian angel. But when he's davening to Hashem in Chutzlo, it says the Ramban, according to the book of Daniel, there's a Malach in charge there who's intercepting your prayers. And therefore, you cannot have a direct relationship with God only Eretz Yisrael. Because here there's no Malach in charge. It's me and you, and you and me, so happy together. But in the rest of the world, there's a Malach there that's impeding your direct relationship with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. The book of Daniel tells us that. Now look at source number 14. This is from the Seif al Gilgulim. This is from Chaim Vital. You know, the Ariya Kodesh didn't write anything, Yehuda. His teachings are written down by a star disciple who was called what? Reb Chaim Vital, source number 14. You probably didn't know how to use the internet. Uh, the Seif al Gilgulim. And uh, he writes down what his great Rebbe, the Ariya Kodesh, taught him. Look what he says here. I took a part of it. Source number 14. You have it, Yehuda? Talmud Vatik. It's quoting from a Talmud Vatik. Uh, what does a Talmud Vatik mean? An ancient Talmud. Gam bezeh tovin. Sheyesh. Sekonioi shekoshe beinehem. Hamisa. The Moshe Beit Olva Sholem. Why was Moshe so upset to die? Why did he daven 515, say a little prayer for me? How do we know 515, Chanoch? Vet Chanan. He said, I beg God. The Gematria, the word that Chanan, I beg God. Gematria, how much? 515. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't. Moshe Rabbein, what are you afraid to die for? Reunited and it feels so good. Why are you so afraid to die, Moses? That's the real Kodesh question. Chaim Vital is quoting a Talmud Vatik that is ready quotes. Why was Moshe so kosher? Why was it so difficult in the eyes of Moshe Rabbeinu, all of us all to die? He says, listen, have a look inside. The yesh lehepoch, v'atam. It's something, what does hepoch mean? Something, hepoch Something upside down. Upside down. Why hafuch? Who said cafe hafuch? Ever drink a cafe hafuch? Oil of hafuch. It's upside down. Why is Moshe so afraid to die for? Huh? He's more afraid. He was upset. Vatam. Why was he upset? He knows what's waiting from the other side. What's waiting from the other side? Kodesh Baruch Hu. Reunited and feels so good. So take a pill and lie down, Moses. Vatam. You did. Vatam. 14. Ki Moshe ben Ol, Mem Reish Ayin Hei Yehuda. See that? Mem Reish Ayin Hei is Moshe Rabbeinu Olav HaSholon. 
Adayin loy kayem kol tayag hatluesh baaretz. A very strange statement, Chayim Vital. He didn't do all the six thirteen that depend on what in the land of Israel. Six thirteen depend on Israel. Only a handful of mitzvahs depend. On, only agricultural mitzvahs depend here. How come Chaim Vital in the real court says that all 613 mitzvahs depend what? It ain't so. It's just agricultural mitzvahs. Or is it? I think it's underlined, no, Chava? It's underlined? Source 14? Yeah, it's Kol Tayag Rak Be'eretz Yisrael. What are you talking about, Chaim Vital? Moses didn't do all Tayag that are dependent in the land. Is it true? The Bidya Beis Hamikdash, the Kedai. Listen to this. Why was he so afraid to die? Yuda, the Kedai. I think on the Kedai Sheloi Yachzor the Gilgal. Moshe was afraid that if he doesn't come to Israel and he doesn't do all the mitzvahs, he'll have to come back again. He'll be re what business has God in? The recycling business. He's in the soul business. He didn't want to come back and be recycled. Who mochrak lekach? He would be forced. <laughs> Therefore, dying was so difficult for Moses. You hear what he's saying? Because if he's not in Eretz Yisrael, even the mitzvahs that he does in Shmutz Lovitz really don't count. Otherwise, how can Chaim Vital say, you the Kol Tayag? You see that? Kol Tayag at Leo. All 613 depend on what? In Eretz Yisrael. So even the mitzvahs that Moshe did that are not dependent on the land, says Chaim Vital, really don't count fully unless you do them where? In Israel. And Moshe was afraid, therefore, he will have to be come back as a Gilgal, which is very painful for the neshama. And therefore, he didn't want to die. He wanted to come to Israel to do the mitzvahs for keeps, for real. Ubezeh Tov in Lama, why Moshe had a daven so many prayers to come to Eretz Yisrael? Because the Tayak mitzvahs only count fully rak be Eretz Yisrael. An amazing statement of Daria Kodesh Chaim Vital. It's actually a Rashi in source number 11, Yehuda. If you look at Rashi, we, we read that in source number 12. That even the, when you go into Golas, do mitzvahs only as a reminder they shouldn't Seem to you chadoshim when you want when you come back to Israel. So Baruch, what? Lenses, have no guide outside of lenses. That's a, a statement in the uh, the Gemara of Avodah and it's also Rashi brings the Chumash. Whoever lives outside the land of Israel is like he has no God. Say what? Kol adar b'chutzlores k'mi she'enu elahai. Kol adar b'chutzlores k'mi she'enu elahai. Anyone who lives in chutzlores like he has no God. Why? You have a God, but you'll have no direct relationship with him because the, the heavenly ministers are in charge over there. Intercepting They're intercepting your prayers. Intercepting the, huh? the Rabbim in his Hagdama to Sefer al Mitzvot, Mindel, yeah. asked upon himself, there's a mitzvah and Torah Kedoshim to you. Be holy. He said, the Rabbim, how come I didn't put it on the list? There's an open posseg in Leviticus Kedoshim to you. Be holy. So he asked on himself, why don't I count it as what? As one of the mitzvot. So the Ramam answers, Chanoch, that can't be a mitzvah, that's the end game. The purpose of all mitzvahs is Kedoshim to you. So how could I make it a mitzvah? Every time you do any mitzvah, you're automatically gaining a level of Kedushah. So I cannot make Kedoshim to you a mitzvah because it sums up all the mitzvahs. That's what the master says in his Agdoma. He says, Chazoinish, the Ramam doesn't have to repeat himself. He gave you the guidelines. I'm counting in the Sefer Mitzvot Pratim. What does Pratim mean? Details. A concept of just call it Torah Kula, I can't count as a mitzvah. So it says the Chazoinish, no less. The reason the Ramam doesn't count living in Israel as a mitzvah, for the same reason he doesn't count Kedoy Shem Tiyu. It's the goal. It's the end game. Just like it doesn't count Kedoshim to you, because every time you do a mitzvah, you're being holy. So every time you do a mitzvah, it only has full value only in Yishev Ed Yisrael. So that cannot be a mitzvah. That's the sum total of all the mitzvahs, is to do them where in Eretz Yisrael.
how do I know that the Rambam is right? <laughs> Exodus 4, the burning bush. Look at the burning bush, Chava. God speaks to him. He says to Moshe, I come to take my people out of the land of Egypt to bring them al Eretz Tova Rechava to a good and spacious land. Now, how spacious is it? Like New Jersey? I think Texas is more spacious. Eretz Tova Rechava to a very good and spacious land. Now, how spacious is it? I think New Jersey is wider. It doesn't mean physically. In order to expand your intellectual capacity to the fullest, it's only in Eretz Israel. So he mentions the good land, and then he says, when you take the people out of Egypt, you'll bring them back to get the Torah on this mountain. Is that chronological order as Archaim HaKadosh? God to the first said, when you take the people out of Cairo, come back to this mountain to get the Torah, and then Eretz Tova Chava. Why does God reverse the order, Hanoch? He says, I bring them up from Cairo to Eretz Tova Chava. And then he says, wait a minute, when you take them out of Egypt, you come back to this mountain and get the Torah. What came first, Hanoch? The good land didn't come until 40 years later. First God should have mentioned what? The Torah. Matan Torah. And he mentions, no, first he mentions Eretz Tova Rechava. And only then does he mention Matan Torah. Exodus 4, why? Says Rechaim HaKadosh. The purpose of the Exodus and the purpose of Matan Torah is only to come to Eretz Israel. Anybody said? The whole reason for the Exodus and the whole reason for Matan Torah is only to do it here. And therefore he mentions Eretz Tova first. That's the end game. Keep your eye on the prize. That's the end game. Eretz Tova. Are you getting this? It gets even better. At the Seder, I don't want to scare you before, at the Seder, you're praising God for the redemption, for the Exodus. You quote a posuk from Pashas Kitovoi that the pilgrim, when he brings his delicious fruits of his Gazef to the temple, he praises God for Eretz Yisrael. So Asavetchi Gash, you're sitting at the Seder. You're celebrating the redemption from Egypt. What are you mixing in Deuteronomy 26, the speech that the pilgrim says on Chag HaShuot, when he brings the Bikurim, praising God for Eretz Yisrael. You're sitting at the Pesach Seder. You don't have Eretz Yisrael until 40 years later, right? So why are you mentioning the, the farmer's praising of the land of Israel when he brings the fruit at the Seder? The exodus took place. You didn't get to Eretz Yisrael until 40 years later. Same idea. Says Valsavi, same idea. To prove that the whole purpose of the redemption of Egypt was to come to Eretz Tova and to enjoy the delicious fruits of Eretz Yisrael. Isn't that amazing? The next time you bite into a Jaffa orange or a Pisgat Zev date, have in mind, Mendel, you're ingesting the Kiddusha and the Shechina. You can't do that in Lakewood. Can you do that in Lakewood? No. I don't think so. It's pretty amazing. Hmm? How a mundane act of eating the fruits of Israel you becoming holy. You are what you eat. This is an amazing idea. Therefore, I made the, the sources. I shouldn't think I'm off the wall here. Uh, this is the Bach source number nine. And uh, source number 14, the Chaim Vital, where he says all 613 mitzvahs. I think it's underlined, Chava. Source 13, see that? Kol Taryad Tluyas Boris. All the 613 not just the agricultural mitzvahs, mm -hmm. depend on Eretz Yisrael. So Moshe was worried that all the mitzvahs that he did in the Midbar really don't count fully and will have to be recycled and he doesn't want that. It's very painful for the Neshama to come back again. Very painful to be recycled. He knows he was recycled twice before. Well, he was recycled. He was what? You know, you're the same. According to Chaim Vital, he was a Gilgal of Hevel. And Noah. That's right. Oh, he came back as Hevel, and if he was Noah and Hevel, that's right. He came. He was Hevel, and he was also Noah, and so he didn't want to come back again. You know, I think who said twice is enough? Hmm. 
maybe he came back more, we just don't know. What? So, so we see how fortunate we are that we live in Eretz Yisrael. And we should feel good about it, Benish. That we have the schuss to live in Eretz Yisrael. And our brethren who are not here yet, we should what? Make them aware. Right? For more of Rabbi Sprecher's teachings, visit rabbisprecher.com.